gentlemen, thank you both for your time. Why don't we begin on nuclear power? Keith, this is uh, the top scientific body in Australia, CSIRO. It's already run the rule over small modular reactors. It says they'll be really expensive, large ones. Still very expensive, albeit not, not quite as dear, but $16 billion for the first one. Does it make you wonder if you can deliver nuclear energy that actually makes power prices go down? What we have done is start a conversation about a source of power that is throughout the world. In fact, so many of our peer economies use it, and they use it as a reliable, clean source of baseload power. So we've started a conversation. Of course, there will be many reports like this, and we will have uh, our detailed uh, response to that uh, in due course. Uh, but, but if there is such concern about the costs or other requirements, well, we ask uh, the Labor Party, well, what do you have to fear in lifting the ban? So let the, the private sector, uh, along with other bodies, uh, do the maths on this. Uh, let others uh, mm. do exactly what the CSIRO has done. Julian, on that prospect, um, so if we think of climate, and I know you've been someone very concerned about uh, climate and emissions, if it's the biggest crisis, why not just be genuinely agnostic on energy? Nuclear is very low emissions. Doesn't look like it stacks up right now, but it might in the future. So couldn't you just say, sure, if it, if it stacks up, then we'll look at it, we're not going to right now? Would that be a better response than sort of a bit of scaremongering on nuclear? Uh, look, I like Keith, and this might wreck our reputations by saying so here on national television, but I do like Keith and we get on. But I feel really sorry for him. He's um, one of the least silly people in his party room. He's a lot cleverer than most of them, and he's got to keep coming on television defending this nonsense, this fantasy. Let's be very clear. Nuclear power, as report after report after report after report for years, for decades, has shown is the most expensive form of new power in Australia. That's not a contested fact. Australia has the best renewable energy resources of any developed country in the world. This is not a policy. Um, it's a distraction to cover up the fact that the Neanderthals and the nutters that populate the Liberal Party party room cannot agree on an energy policy. They were in government for nearly a decade. They had 22 energy policies. They couldn't agree on one of them. This okay. is not a policy. I mean, Keith might want to reveal to us, you know, are we doing small reactors, five times more expensive than renewables and firming, or big reactors, three times more expensive? How many hundreds of billions are they going to find to build these fantasy nuclear reactors that wouldn't come on till the 2040s? We would be mad as a country not to seize the advantages All that right. come with the cheapest renewable energy in the developed world. I don't know. I mean, I could, I could try to make Keith reveal that, but, um, you know, Pete Stefanovic will be back next week and say, what happened to my panel? Keith's not coming on anymore. Um, <laughs> you, you're welcome to, Keith. Got one in Doncaster? Ask the next... <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. They, they tend to replace the coal-fired power plants, as, according to the plan, so they'll, they'll be where they are somewhere Not if they're small, but anyway. remember, um, the small ones don't exist. And can I just address that idea well, of the um, you're going to have one in this Keith. seat or, or that seat? Well, we are a big yeah. country that has a place for everything. We don't have defence bases in every seat. We separate where people uh, live and where... Con commercial enterprises are. Uh, we are more than capable of planning an issue like this. Uh, Canada has had no problems doing it. France has had no problems doing it. And if you went to the COP climate change conference, you would have seen that it was a nuclear conference and we were the outlier. Okay. Let's talk immigration. Uh, big business groups are coming out in unison today and saying, be wary of immigration cuts. What do you make of this, Keith? Because Yes, you might feel like you have sentiment with the, with the public with you, but in fact, the immigration numbers are coming down a lot, even in the estimates under Labor. So by pledging to go further, do you need to be wary of the economy? Are you going to do this delicately? Uh, we are doing it delicately, and, and that's what uh, Peter's budget and reply uh, noted. Uh, what we are acknowledging is that after the COVID era, there was a, a massive spike in migration that was disproportionate to state and Commonwealth governments' capacity to provide all of the things that a growing population needs, including housing, including schools, hospitals, preserving green space and not having everyone stuck in traffic all the time. Um, there's only so much you can do over su such a period of time. So we're bringing the number back to a number that is proportionate, and that has enormous support, not just in the Australian community, but in the migrant community, because we know the social licence to have a strong uh, migration program is that it is okay. proportionate. 
Julian, this is going to be something that is going to get some support at least. That Look at Queensland. Stephen Miles, two days in a row, was saying, yep, it's my idea, too many cars on the road. And he says it's partly the fault of too many migrants. Yeah, well, migration is too high and the government's on track to halve a net overseas migration by the end of the next financial year. Uh, but it's striking, isn't it? The budget reply, there was nothing on cost of living, not a single measure, not a single shred of an economic plan, nothing on energy, um, just a fake cut to migration. The government is on track to halve net overseas migration. And what we've got from the Liberals is anger, negativity, um, trying to pick a fight. That's all they've got. But remember, um, you don't need to believe me. Independent experts, former Chief Police yeah. Commissioner, um, Dennis Richardson, former Secretary of Defence, said under the Liberals, under Peter Dutton, the migration system was broken. It was misused by criminal syndicates. Over 100,000 largely fake asylum seekers arrived by aeroplane under Peter Dutton's watch and they did absolutely nothing. So we are cleaning up the mess. Right. We are fixing the migration system. For the first time, we're getting control okay. of international uh, student numbers. And this is a nonsense. It's not a policy. It's I'm not a plan. I'm trying to bring this segment in under budget. I've got to leave it there. Keith, Julian, thank you. Talk again soon. When we come back, King Charles following his mother.